Damon from California Carnivores again. I want to do a follow-up to our um, seed sowing guide because you can talk all you want about how to grow seeds, but if nothing grows, then why would you listen? So these are the very pots that uh, I sowed during our seed sowing guide. And it's interesting to see how well they're doing. And if you didn't already watch them, go back and watch it because it's to teach you exactly how to have great success like this with growing Venus flytraps. And it is a tricky thing, but obviously it's super possible. And if you can look up close there, Danielle is, uh, put my finger in there, so you can see how very, very small they are. You can see that there's probably two little um, pointed uh, sprout leaves or cotyledons. Those are the very first leaves that come out of the seed when it sprouts. And then right after that are actually tiny miniature functional traps, semi-functional. They're so small that it's really hard for them to catch very much of anything, maybe a stray fungus gnat. Um, but at this size, they're not gonna catch very much. Um, it's good to feed them a little bit with fertilizer. Um, the maxi fertilizer at low dose uh, that we recommend, maybe once every couple of weeks, you could do that. Um, you wanna be careful though, because that fertilizer is also gonna feed the moss. So don't fertilize too much. That's it. That'll just increase the moss to grow and a lot of times it buries tiny Venus light traps. If that happens, you can go ahead and transplant them carefully and pull them out of that moss, maybe after a few months if they get really buried. But most of these pots here, because I sterilized the soil, um, the moss hasn't really sprouted yet because it didn't really get a chance to do that until I took it out of those um, bins that I had them in over the winter. Um, if Daniela wants to come back in, another interesting thing to look at is just some variation. This is a kind of mossier pot, but these were red microdent uh, seedlings. And you can see already, there's lots of dark red plants in there and you eagle eyes might even be able to see that they are microdented compared to some of these others. Um, these ones here behind it are Titan. So we collected those from Titan. Again, if you're looking really closely, you'll see some dark red plants in there anyways. Part of our breeding program is we'll take a giant plant like that and we'll cross it with other reds and other weird plants to get weird and red giants. And it looks like Daniela made some really red giants in there already. It's too early to tell, but y'all take my word on that. Um, these were uh, legally collected seeds out of North Carolina, a guy who sells seeds off of his property. Um, and we sell those seeds here too. They're totally um, legal and ethically harvested. Um, but interesting to note that from those wild collected seeds, there's very little variation. That's because all the variation in Venus flytraps is made by man by taking like traits and crossing them together. And in the wild, you don't see too much variation. Even an entirely red plant would be really rare. Maybe, maybe you'd see a dente plant. Um, but that's just kind of cool. And this last pot here is Gold Strike, which is a red cultivar. Um, but you can see again, there's some reds in there, but there's also some greens. And that's the really fun of it. You never know what you're gonna get. We're busy making lots of more Venus flytrap seeds now, and you'll probably see them for sale in a couple of months on our webpage. We probably still have some left over from last year. They're totally viable and good. So if you wanna grow Venus flytraps from seeds, just like this, go check out our seed sowing guide and stay tuned for more videos. Uh, and we're always answering questions on social media, so ask those questions.